Hi, Scissorin here with another mini cast, a little secret episode I'm recording off stream with a Darth microtransaction. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Yeah, man. Thanks for inviting me on. How you doing? I'm having a pretty good day. Uh, did some POE this morning, kind of looking into the build for Affliction that we're going to go. And uh, then the D4 stuff launched this morning for Abattoir Reserve. So I've had kind of a full day of, of ARPGs on the brain. Yeah, so so is that out now, the Avatar Seer thing? And that's like... Yeah, it dropped like seven hours ago, I want to say. Okay. Approximately. That's yeah, like about the... That. Um, what are they called again in D3? Rifts. It's a greater... Greater Rifts. Yeah, 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 they're basically greater Rifts. Oh, is it? It's all right. I I didn't play it too long because I had to do this chat with Gazi, but then also it was kind of laggy for me. I think a lot of people were logging in and testing it. There was some lag issues and the D level with the glyphs it was a little buggy so i was kind of waiting but it's pretty difficult I'm not gonna lie um it's the numbers yeah, are are yeah, jacked to the tits i think is the phrase so it's it's going to be pretty difficult but the glyph rewards pretty strong so far from what i'm seeing so that's cool that's good and you're kind of like you've been coming very recently to path of excel from diablo so this has been a big changeover for you like it's been a, a crazy experience yeah, I mean, like, I, I've been watching it. It's been really fun to watch you discover it. Tell me, tell me a little bit about how was it coming over from uh, Diablo to PoE? Well, to be fair, I'm kind of new to most ARPGs in general. Um, so I played D3, but I didn't play it like a whole ton. I was working a call center job, and I would just play Spin to Win Barb, which was, yeah, just hold down a button, and that was about it. And then uh, D4 was... The one that I've played the most because, you know, I was playing uh, the Diablo Immortal beforehand. I was thinking, well, I'd rather play a PC game than a mobile game. So I started playing the uh, the Diablo 4 one. And that was really the first time I started to really play, you know, grindy a lot of hours on the ARPGs. Yeah. Um, going to PoE, though, my experience has been, I want to say, different than Diablo 4. Like, Diablo 4 felt to me like a completely different vibe from Path of Exile. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, they're they're very separate and what makes it enjoyable for me um the diablo 4 is is much more relaxed and like i can drink some beers and play yeah. it and then path of exile is like i kind of need my brain activated yeah. you know 100 i definitely do feel in d4 i'm not the target audience i try to do make that clear in my criticism and stuff but i still want to see the game improve and it is like sure. the last thing was uh last season was a lot more enjoyable for me so at least it is going in the right direction yeah, I would say I'm probably in the target audience, to be honest. A little bit more of a casual Andy. So, you know, D4 lasted quite a while for me. But um, to answer your question about going from D4 to the Path of Exile, the biggest thing that I'm noticing is is the boss depth. That's what comes to mind immediately, is how different the mechanics of the bosses are, you know? And uh, I'm stuck on Shaper right now, but that's kind of what I've been enjoying the most out of all of my experience in Path of Exile, I was trying to figure out how do I actually beat these bosses and going into them blind has been pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, if you want some help on any bosses, just let me know and I can give you some tips and tricks at least. Or if you just want to discover it for yourself, that's also a, a great journey. So you've got full of options. That's kind of been the, the so far going in blind, like not really knowing anything has been probably the funnest part of Path of Exile. So I'm trying to avoid yeah. as many spoiler tips as possible, though. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's it's super fun. Like the first time I killed Shaper, I was literally shaking. Um, and yeah, no, I'll I'll never forget it. I I don't know if I've ever shook that hard on any boss. I actually almost passed out. Um, it was the, so the you were you boss. were you were pumped. You're yeah. watching it being shaped. How many tries did it take you? Because I'm that's where I'm stuck. Is is Shaper and Pox accidentally leaked me that there's apparently a phase three. So I've never made right. it past phase two where I'm running around right. a circle trying not to have the ball drop in the middle or whatever. I, I'm stuck so, there. So it was on hardcore, so it was the first try. Um, but we did... Oh, wow. I do think we did five practice runs on softcore first. So I guess six try, I guess, then, if you uh, if you look at it that way. Um, I do think we got him on the first softcore try as well, but we were we were dying a lot. So it was a, me and a friend of mine, Blue, and uh it was crazy like i even ended up wearing an abyssus so anything would one shot me because i would take so much damage but we just needed the damage so i had to dodge perfectly um it was a crazy you're just fight. a god you beat it the first your first attempt ever on shape where you just walked in and one shot him yeah and i almost died too Must i be went nice. down to like 
30 life or something. It was so, um, we, we had so little damage as well because we had a very bad duo set up. Like it wasn't really, there wasn't a, a reason to go duo. So at the end, my friend Blue is like, yo, this, if you want, you can go in solo. Like it'll be easier for you solo. And I'm like, we made it here together. We're finishing this together. And then we got the, uh, the world first shaper. So that was, uh, that was a trip. I was just world yeah, shaking. Oh, you actually got the world first. Yeah. Oh no! Okay, no wonder you were so oh, yeah. you were so and, pumped about it. And it was my it. first time that over two thousand people were watching the stream, and it was like three point three. So it went from like eight hundred viewers on average to like three point three, and I was like, "Oh my god, so much pressure!" And then that's a pretty wholesome story, though. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely like top three stream moments of all time, I think, for me. Uh, a good time, and it's like it's not even that crazy of a boss. Like obviously, there are newer, more modern bosses now that are even crazier. But I still think that's like the the most so nad I've been for a boss. It's a good one. How many years were you playing at that point by the time you got the world's first there? So I'd been playing Path of Exile since 2013, but I'd been playing like giga casual. Uh, okay. It's a, it's a gameplay level I like to call dedicated casual, where I would still play like 10 to 20 hours a day. But I didn't even have a character at level 90. So I would just keep making loads of new characters. I still only played hardcore and I would just be trying things and I would, yeah, I don't know. I would, I would just take long breaks, come back. And then I started streaming in 2015 and I think shapers in 2016. So I'd been streaming for a year and then I'd actually been trying to become more competitive. Um, but I think I probably had 7,000 hours in the game when I killed shaper when that came out. Okay. That's a pretty good amount of hours. I've only ever played the game on Steam. Yeah. And I've left it all overnight a few times, so the number's not quite right. But my Steam hours are how I tell how yeah. many hours I'm getting. Only 300 right now, so I'm still kind of really pretty, well new, pretty newbie. Yeah, really I got well. chat backpacking me a little bit. That, is, that helped for the first It season. is really helpful. Chat is generally, I mean, you will get bad advice from chat too, but there is a lot of good advice there from time to time. So you started 2013, you played 10 years. Is Shaper that new of a boss? How, how yeah, when did so Shaper come we to We didn't game? really have any bosses for a long time because the game started so okay. slowly in 2013. And for a long time, it was pretty much just piety that we were farming as a boss. And like, you know, it was the act bosses. Uh, so I remember when Dominus came, that was a big deal because that was like a new boss to farm. And he was exactly the way you see him now, but we were so much weaker. And I remember I killed him first try in Cruel, so I could get to Merciless. And I was so excited. I was like, oh my god, I killed him. And I kept leveling. A friend of mine, three levels later, is like, hey, can you kill him for me since you've killed him already? I'm like, yeah, I'm three levels higher now. No problem. Went back and died. I'm like, oh no. Because I didn't know about the Blood Rain, and I just avoided that mechanic the first time I killed it. And that was so, hardcore, so you lost your character, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. So my friend was like, oh, I'm going to overlevel a little bit. I was like, yep. Great, thanks. Um, and yeah, we would just farm those back then. And then Edziri came quite a lot later. I think it was 2014 or 15. And then, yeah, we didn't really have a boss until Shaper. I, I kept killing well. myself on that boss because I didn't realize you couldn't hit the mirror. <laughs> yeah, same. I've, I've done that, but on hardcore. <laughs> that took me a little time to, to learn. But you play with a friend. Is that is that a pretty common thing in POE? I never really see people playing with anybody. The only it time I've ever seen that is I joined your stream one time and there's four people and you were doing like mega juiced maps or something. That's what you're calling it where you're getting yeah. super loot. You were well, all very try hard serious mode. So I always like to joke that ARPGs are the genre with the least amount of friends. Like people generally play this solo. Um, and True. POE is very niche as well. So I think a lot of people that have friends and try to get them to play the game. They'll be like, hey, come try POE with me. They see it, and they're like, they see the skill tree, and they're like, nah, bro, I'm good. Um, so, I mean, we do have quite a large player base now. It is still pretty niche. Also, September 2016 is when the Shaper came. The game. Um, it only took you three years to get a world's first from, like, you touched the game, and then three years after you were world f That's imp That's kind of impressive, right? So it gets harder and harder because we're all we're all becoming more competitive now. And now there's been like more prize pools and the gauntlet event I run as well has like put in so many big prize pools. So now people actually practice a lot more. Um, whereas back then there wasn't so much practice in that sense. It was more people just playing. Uh, so it was very, very different. And I generally learn quite fast on things like that. 
Um, but yeah, no, it was it was fun. Like the the craziest craziest example of that. There's a player called I'm Exile, and he's pretty much like thought of as the second best player right now, with Ben being number one. And Exile is only played since Metamorph, which is 2020. But that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is he was competing like two or three leagues after he started, like literally at the top level. So he would sometimes die to a rookie mistake of something that pretty much every veteran would know. But since he was still a new player, just competing really highly, he would just die to crazy things. And we'd be like, that's so unfortunate because everybody knows that. But he didn't because he had less than like 500 hours. But he was, he just like always tries to play games at a real competitive level. So he is crazy good in PoE and now he plays World of Warcraft 2 at the highest level. Crazy. Are all the competitions that you're referring to here is that typically hardcore stuff and is poe the competitions around hardcore is that really where the ultra competitive side is so anything with prize money is generally in hardcore solo cell phone because softcore solo cell phone the race isn't as exciting in the same way because if somebody is ahead they do, they usually stay ahead whereas in hardcore mm -hmm. you actually do see those big upsets like ben dying and somebody else coming in and I think Ben Ben has a, a quite a landslide in the gauntlets. He's won half of them. Um and then other people like Steel, Al Kaiser, Exile, etc. have won them as well. Um But yeah, generally anything with prize money is uh, hardcore solo cell fun. Especially like it doesn't really work to have them in trade league either because then it ends up being a popularity contest with who can like raise the most amount of stuff. Mm. So you they're they're getting their audience to feed them or what have you. Yeah. Basically. So every every gauntlet and every event that I've arranged through GGG has been on hardcore SSF. We have done I did one event, I I call it Sabaton. I think it was Sabaton I called it. And that was a duo event. And that was on Softcore. Um because you had to play together and you have to do every boss together. Very important that like both people are in. Um, that's kind of a cool event can. yeah because yeah. you get in each other's way and stuff because the boss will maybe target you and hit your friend so that was really fun and you had 24 hours played <laughs> uh slash played so that was very different than most of the races end up being a bit of a marathon with people stay up but this was based on your uh. slash played instead so we had i think it was six hours of play time one hour break six hours of play time and then uh the same the next day so 24 hours slash played and the goal was um how many ubers could you kill there were three teams that killed all Ubers. I think Ben and Exile was team number one. They did it in, I can't remember exactly. I think it was 14 hours uh, from a first start to kill all the Ubers. Um, wait, four, did you say 14 hours? Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and then, then, wait, is, is, on solo cell found 14 hours? Well, duo found. There was two of them. Um, and then second place was me and Steelmate with 16 hours. And then I think Karatha and Havoc were third with 18 or 20. I can't remember if any other teams finished it. But it was so I'm realizing awesome. that there's an insane gap here is what I'm seeing. The gap is not closing. It sounds like the gap is widening is what I'm hearing. Yeah. It was a little bit. Holy moly. I, I, the people that do practice and stuff are like quite out because most people are just playing and having fun. Like not sure. that many people are like try hard practicing and stuff. I, I'm I'm very lazy with practice. Like I actually I don't practice. I just play, um, but I do play a lot. So I, that's a kind of practice. Yeah, that seems insane to me considering I have zero Ubers down, and I'm pretty sure I couldn't do the campaign in 14 hours. No, you uh, must do the campaign in 14 hours. I mean, I don't know. I think it would take me two. Maybe I only stream like six hours a day or something. So right, right, right. I mean, two days I guess would be 12, but. Um, yeah, it would take me a couple of days to get through it for sure. So but it's also, it depends how you approach the game, right? If you're just playing around and you're not really thinking about improving, then you won't. But most people that are racers, they're very like object oriented. They'll like, they'll rewatch their own VODs and they'll be like, well, how can I shave off time here? And I remember Havoc was one of the people that started shaving off loads amount of time just by really min maxing when he went to town. So before we would maybe go to town two or three times per act. You would like get that down to like how can i go back to the town only one single time in this act or like as little as possible like where do i actually need to go to town and then now you start seeing things from tai tai killer and things like that like vendor walking like they'll like click on the vendor but then very quickly at the same second they talk to the vendor they'll click farther away to the right so the vendor window is open and the character is walking so he can buy things while his character is actual speed. So actual speed run tech, like people are exactly, yeah, 
like a super mario 64 speed run or something like yeah are... and and that stuff i'm really bad at that stuff i'm a pretty good early adopter when there's not crazy min maxing so in pretty much any game i play just because i play video games for a living hopefully i'm like decent at it uh i'll be okay at it but then whenever you know in any game people get really good i just get crushed does GGG actively like watch these, sort out, and like fix bugs and stuff like that, so that the next league you have, there's this, oh no, our speedrun strat got nerfed, and now we have to relearn it all. Like, is that something that typically happens between leagues? So yeah, they recently did nerf a lot of speedrun things. Like that's why they removed onslaught as a support gem and replaced it with momentum, is because they wanted to mix up the um, the speed racing before Exile Cotton. They wanted things to be different and see different tactics from the last Exile Con. So they did they did mix up a lot of things because of that. Which some of it was welcome, some of it wasn't. Especially because it affected the base game in quite a lot of ways. So like removing Onslaught from everyone early, I don't think that was loved. I personally hate momentum. I think it's an awful idea and I miss having Onslaught at early levels. So. Okay. Well that makes yeah. sense. I know in some of the other games, uh, speedrunners can get heat for that exact thing where it's, you know, speedrun strats can alter the actual version of the game itself and people get that upset was, by that. That was what a lot of the comments were. People were like, did this really need to change for four people that are going to race at ExileCon? It's like, bro, so I, I get it. I, I do see that as well. Um, but I understand that they wanted to have an exciting ExileCon race. And it was a very exciting ExileCon race. I actually had a seizure at the end of the race. So... <laughs> That was crazy. At the at the end, like after you had completed it already. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't in the race. I don't usually no. do those fast races anymore. Um, but I was in the audience watching, and I like sneezed really hard, and then I had a seizure. So, yeah. Are, are they are those pretty common for you? No, I had one when I was like twelve, and then I had one when I was thirty five. So. Oh right. wow! So that's okay. There is quite a gap there. Quite a gap there. Yeah, it was really weird. It scared everyone. So I woke up to all my friends around me crying, and I was like, "Oh, that's nice. People care." Oh, you gotta okay. You gotta see the feelings. All right. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was I, I feel like that would scare me though. Like you wake up and all your friends are around you crying. I'm like, what happened? Like, do you did you black out? Do you remember that? How does that work? It was pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I um, it was actually very scary from my point of view because. So I sneezed really hard, um, and I'd been holding that sneeze for a while. So the doctor said, first off, he did tell me holding a sneeze can actually be dangerous. Like, it's not just a myth. Um, and then he said, because of the way I like tried to sneeze and cough at the same time, I just, um, I, I just like pulled a muscle. But I pulled a muscle really close to my heart, so it was just really, really painful. So he just said it was a, a pain-induced seizure. Um, and, uh, but, but from my point of view... The way it worked was I sneezed and coughed really hard, just got a really bad pain in my chest. And then I didn't think of anything of it. And then I coughed uh, 30 seconds later. I was like, man, that still really hurts. And I started thinking borderline. It was, it was like kind of similar to a panic attack too, even though it felt pretty different. And um, I was like, what if I tore something? What if I tore something off my heart? And then things started going prickly. And I'm like, oh, oh no. no, what's happening? And then Elena looked at me like, are you okay? And I tried to stand up. And I'm like, we need to go. I need help. And after that, I don't remember anything. And then, um, then I started exuding um, stroke-like symptoms. Like my jaw went to the side, like, like that. Started Jesus. Christ. My arms went up like this, and then I started falling forward. Oh, and my uh, my pupils were fully dilated, like completely black. So for my wife, she's fucking terrified at this point. And she's trying to hold me. Noogie's holding me. Grimrose oh, holding no. me. And I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm completely out. Like, it wasn't even like sleeping. Like, I don't remember anything. This wasn't dreaming. I was just out. Um, so like, pain, everything turning dark, chest pain. So I'm like, I died. Like, the first last five seconds I remember, I was just thinking, oh, I died. Um, God. So that was terrifying. So I wake up again. I'm like, oh, still here. Poggers. Um, and then, yeah, like, paramedics came, give me some sugar, and the racing in Pee very exciting. Very exciting. Holy moly, dude. they did moly, do a full dude. test in New Zealand, and they were like, you're fine. It was just really, really bad pain and panic. But you were in the front of the crowd, though, right? Oh, is yeah. my understanding. Everyone was is like, so, what like... the fuck? Quinn was like, is he good, bro? Is he good, bro? <laughs> yeah. It was very scary. 
It was, Holy uh, shit, that sounds... My god, that sounds stressful as fuck. You got your wife worrying about you, you're in yeah. front of an audience, you got every known streamer known to mankind. Good god. Yeah. What a story. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty crazy. Um, and, and the joke was that Tai Tai had just been in the hospital. I think he had a panic attack. I can't remember what happened to Tai Tai. There was actually several people that were in the hospital. Uh, and I, I kept joking that oh, I wanted to check out the hospital too. I can let just Tai Tai do it. So. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, it was, I guess uh, I'll be at next Exile Con to see yeah, what happens. I haven't gone there. to any of these. so yeah, I'd love to meet you. That would be fun, man. I, I I really wanted to go to BlizzCon this year, but I ruptured my ear. I didn't, never had a seizure or nothing like that. Um, other than, like, panic attack, micro-seizure type stuff, you know, yeah. like you referred to. I've had those when I worked in call center. It was a very stressful job, and I, I would, believe that. Like, it would freak me out a little bit. But um, other than that, I never had seizures or nothing. But when I was supposed to go to BlizzCon, uh, I came back from, what was it, TwitchCon, and I got you know, the cough, the con crud or whatever it is yeah, that goes yeah. around there. And, and I was trying to clear my ears, you know, doing the, the oh, scuba no. thing. And I uh, eventually just blew my eardrum, I guess, from being I sick. Didn't know and that then happened from that. I don't know if that's what happened, but I'm guessing that's what happened. Because it, it, it was, there was pressure and it just kept feeling like it was yeah, yeah. building in the left ear, like worse and worse and worse. Like there's water in it, really, and there's nothing I can do about it. So I kept trying to, like, what's going on? And then it just kind of sounded like crumpled paper. Uh, and then all of the pain started going away, which I, I guess is actually not a good thing. Uh, you, the pain means that your eardrum is still, in fact, intact, which wow. it was not by the end of it. So um, that kind of spiraled into an ear infection, which got me really sick. And then I miss BlizzCon, but uh, yeah, I didn't go ExileCon would be fun to go to. The only not fun thing with ExileCon is that it's in fucking New Zealand, and that is... Uh... Very far. You could cool check out New Zealand, though, right? I mean, it surely is that's cool, got to be a cool place. But it is just like, it is, for me, it's the literal antipode. So it's literally the opposite side of the planet. You could not possibly mm. be further away from Auckland. Uh, so it ends up being like 32 hours of traveling or something. So it's insane. Yeah. It's 32 six. hours. Yeah. Like that. It's like 32 or 34. I think it was 32. At that way. point, just, I'll give you a tip just go the other side of the globe. Like, turn around and then take the plane the other way, I'll probably be sure that 32 oh, hours is insane. So, actually, like, the first time we went, we went east through Abu Dhabi and stuff, which is slightly shorter. I think that was 28. And this time we went west uh, through America, which was horrible. I'm never, ever doing that again. So that is a thing. You do actually go both ways. You are mm -hmm. actually <laughs> completely on the other. Yeah. Go both ways. They're on the same. They're one hour difference. Um, mm. Yeah, going through America was awful. Like, um... What do you call it? Transfer flights through America is so bad because you need, um, just to transfer through America, you need a visa. And your luggage can get lost very easily because sometimes on the airport, you need to take your baggage out and take it back in. And on the way there, we were like, we were like, so do we have to pick up our luggage again in America? And they were like, no, don't worry. It's going all the way. I was like, oh, that's so nice. It did not go all the way. It got stuck in Houston we got that. five days later. And I was like, this fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I got my passport so I could go to New Zealand. I could check that out for ExileCon. I've I've never had to do those thirty two hour flights and I've never had my baggage not show up like that. Yeah. Uh no, that was very, stressful. It's about seven hours to to California or so for if I was gonna do BlizzCon. So I'm I'm not sure how New Zealand long Zealand would be from Alaska, but it would probably be it'd be 15, probably pretty long. Into twenty hours, yeah be a long flight yeah it is long i'm a little too tall for that i think oh, how tall are you i'm six one so i'm not like a freak but i'm like you know on the taller side of it yeah, so yeah. the little the little small thing i normally my knees are like yeah, right yeah. there i'm five nine so, so i'm super comfy okay you're yeah yeah you're yeah. you're in there you can fit in there decently how, I, how long have you been streaming by the way oh i mean uh well that's a good question so let me think about that so college i tried my first stream i think 10 years ago 10 or 11 years ago i know i there was a guy that was you know the little founders badge when you get your sub button and the people that sub the first month get the little icon his was like 72 months or something that i've had the button but i streamed to basically me and myself for about i want to say three or four years before that so it's probably got to be like 
I would think 10 years. I don't know where I would find that data, but it'd be about 10 years. I used to play some League um, oh. back in the day. I would try streaming, and, you know, one person would show up and be like, hi, 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 oh, they're gone. Uh, but, you know, it'd be a cool few seconds, so. Yeah, um, I get that. How how is uh going from working in a call center to streaming? Like, did you go straight from that to that, or? Yeah, basically. Um, I well, I I didn't really do much streaming until Diablo Four. I did a little bit some of the other games. Um, but when when the Diablo channel grew, that's when I really started like streaming, streaming. Um, I I went and did YouTube. Uh, for about the last five years, I've been doing YouTube, and that's when it started to pick up enough where it's like, oh, this is like actually a job. Like, I can you know pay rent at least with this. And um, I was married at the time. So, you know, I, we would split the bills and everything was fine. We were able to sustain and then it kept growing. And uh, I just kind of kept doing YouTube. But I, I would say I've been a content creator full time, like, yeah, it's five or six years now, maybe six years. Nice. You know, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a minute. I, it's kind of all when you, it steam rose together, you know, it's like one big day. It's kind of how I feel about it. You just wake up and then, then you know, the next day it's, is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? I don't know. I Hopefully I didn't miss trash day. You almost have to do streaming like that. I think you kind of just got to dive into it face first. If you, I don't know. I feel like there are very few people that start off with two days off a week and stuff like that. Very few. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how the, how you would take days off with content creation. I mean, yeah. I, I'm feel sure so you have the same stress. Yeah, well, you you get hammered immediately. Like you don't show up for three or four days. It's hard to expect people to, you know, remember you four days later. There's a million options and you know Absolutely. a million different games and everything. So it's you gotta you gotta try to be on. And that's why I actually learned that from Crip uh, because I would watch Crip every day. He'd be online seven p.m. my time. He would be on every day uh, playing Hearthstone, like Arena and whatnot. And so I watched him every single day at the exact same time he would go on. And that's how I watched, that's how I watched Crip. And then I realized that years later, I was like, you know, the consistency of knowing when he's going to be on by looking at my clock is what made me watch him for like a year straight, because I knew he's going to be on every single day exactly at this time. Yeah, no, I've never done that. Um, I used to just be online all the time. Like I would just stream for 30 hour sessions. Uh, but now that I'm streaming a lot less, I really should consider just picking times and just being always live there and take a book out of Crip's book. Make a leaf out of Crip's book, Crip's book even. So how long have you been live streaming then? Uh, I just hit my eight-year partner anniversary two days ago, four days ago. Oh, you know, well, congrats. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been a journey. Crip was one of my inspirations as well. Crip, Soda, Ziggy, and Ita. Ziggy, which one's Ziggy? Ziggy he was the the guy who did the Q and A of the PoE stuff. Oh, Ziggy D. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Ziggy D. All right. Ziggy I got you. you might. So, Affliction is starting on Friday. We're currently on. I don't know what day is today. Is it a Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday for me, I think. Or is it? No, it is yeah. Wednesday, isn't it? Three a.m. here. It's probably a Tuesday for you. Um, Tuesday. Yeah. Have you thought about what build you're starting and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm, so I, I think I'm going to do one more season of trying to be somewhat blind and figure it out myself a little bit. So I decided that I'm going to figure out a theme first. And the theme I went with is start the microtransaction. So I'm going to do a Sith. And the obvious Sith I could do was wow. Palpatine. So I am, you know, unlimited power, right? So uh, I'm trying to do a lightning style build that makes sense for what Palpatine is. And the only thing that I could really think that makes sense is people are trying to get me to do lightning tendrils, but I hated it. I thought it looked limp to me and boring. It looked boring. So then uh, I like the arc. The arc seems cool. You know, shoot the lightning from the fingers and the crackling lance looked fun too. And then they released, what was it? The transfigured gems. Yeah. And it, both of the moves that I liked seem to have a transfiguration or whatever. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, that's exciting. So I went with that. And then it kind of seems like I hear that my build is terrible because I just thought I'll get as much man as I can and put on the Archmage uh. thing with with the the Ark, the Crackling Lance, and then, you know, hopefully it's Branching Exile and I'm good to go. That's That was kind of my, that was my thought process behind it. How well that's actually going to tur uh, turn out, I, I don't know. But uh, apparently the POB tells me I'm going to run out of mana very soon. Well, I mean, that's the beauty of Path of Exile. As long as you're having fun, nothing else really matters. And you can never really, like, the time that you're having right now, 
Um, like I always like to say, my favorite time in any video game is when you know so little that you're actively lying when you're talking about it. Like I remember when I was new to the game, I remember telling a friend of mine, I just overrode a six thing. I swear to God, I overrode a six thing. My friend's like, yeah, you can't do that. It's, it blocks you. And I was like, oh, like that's my favorite time when you like, you will say things that happen to your friend. Don't know what you're talking true. about. Like, yeah. It can't even happen, but you're convinced it happened. That's like, that's the best time. Oh, uh, like the, the first few hundred hours of games, you never get that back. So don't be in a rush to like min max your builds and, and guides and stuff like that. No. Like this is, this is a treasured time. Well, plus it's like you're saying, I'm hearing that you guys are clearing the Ubers in like 14 hours or something. It's like, look, that area of the pie is very well covered. You know, maybe I can just, I'll be the guy who doesn't know what he's doing. I don't, luckily I have the easy job. I don't have to know what I'm doing because I'm not making build guides or anything. I just get to play the damn game. So I'm actually, uh, I'm happy enough with that. I was very embarrassing though in certain times because uh, I was trying to kill, uh, what was it? Elder for the first time. And he was summoning the shaper guy and i'm like oh it's shaper i know that guy and i'm like trying to kill shaper and people are like he's on your team bro like he's you know you can't kill him or whatever like yeah, he's helping yeah. you and i'm seeing they're like die shaper like he's not dying <laughs> so uh you know there's there's you times can that can backfire die there might be the only way i get the kills is <laughs> no you know <laughs> kind of you don't want to do that so slight spoiler but if if the shaper dies he actually can't drop a watcher's eye which makes the point fight kind of pointless that's really bad. So it's a good thing if you didn't let him die. Really? So if it, if he does die, it actually modifies your drops when you fight him? Yeah, you only have a chance to drop a Watcher's Eye as long as you save the Shaper. Um, oh. Which is like, we, uh, you, you could technically do the fight faster if you let the Shaper die. Because the Elder like instantly escapes, you finish off the fight, and boom, you get the drops. But yeah, 0% chance for Watcher's Eye. Have you, wow. uh, have you looked into any of the Path of Exile lore at all? No, to be honest with you, it's not really. It's surprisingly good. Like, I'm not a lore guy, but I'm really into the PoE lore. Like, I, I Give actually... me a snippet. Give, give me a okay. teaser here, you know? Okay. Rope me in. So, my favorite... There's, like, two really cool pieces of lore. And, and Kitten Cat Noodle, she has, like, really great lore series. She's, like, the lore girl. Um, but the coolest lore is the Conquerors, so like Cyrus, Drox, Veritania, etc. They're a previous version of our characters. So Drox is either oh. the Duelist or mar the Marauder. Uh, Varan was a Templar. The Veritania is a Witch. Uh, and Al has been as a Shadow. And so during all our time playing Path of Exile and after the Shaper Saga, the Elder Saga, etc. happened, Dana would always tell us in different speeches, like, Exile, you need to stop mapping, you're going crazy. And she would like always ask, still sane exile. Which first we thought this was just a cutesy so th thing. That's where the meme are you still saying exile comes from. Yeah, because Sama uh... used to say that every time. And she would say that. And then eventually, um, eventually we go insane and she locks us inside the Atlas. And the Atlas used to um it used to start in the corners, four corners. And then we went all the way in to the core of the Atlas, and then boom, she locks us in the core of the Atlas, and she has a big speech like, but they find a way out. They found a way back. Uh, and then we, our now new version of Exiles, have to go back and, uh, and kill our previous version. And then, again, when you kill Cyrus, the last thing she says in her speech is, and now you're done, Exile. You will leave the Atlas alone. And we're like... <laughs> Right back to mapping. Fuck that. And now Zana's gone. Okay. We don't know where she is. But I always thought that was really cool. And when you're killing those characters, they actually know that they're players and they know they're being farmed. Right? So you can hear in their speech, they're like, let me out, please. Let me out. And That's actually super cool. Yeah. And Maritania is like, uh, we are trapped here to dance forever. Like, we're going to be doing this fight forever because it's never going to end. You're always going to farm me. So it's really, really cool. It's like breaking the fourth wall a little bit and, and really interesting. Huh. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't fought any of those bosses yet. So, you know, that's going to be all... Uh, I get experienced that for the first time. That's, that's pretty cool lore, though, that you kind of are farming yourself, your previous version from your previous league, and then you just... Every single time, basically, yeah, that's how it's it goes. A bit like, it's a bit like Diablo, where, you know, the, the warrior in Diablo 1 is Diablo in Diablo 2, etc. Cool stuff like that. I always like that. When there's, like, 
connected storylines and stuff. Yeah, that is surprisingly deep. Yeah. Would have guessed that. Now we just need cinematics. What's your, what's your favorite boss out of all of them, then? Uber Elder. Uber Elder. Is it, it, are the Ubers, because I haven't seen any of the Ubers yet. Actually, I tried to do Uber as Turi, so, but I didn't so even Uber make Elder it to the boss. Uber Elder is actually uh, an Uber. It's a Uber, Uber Elder is the Uber of that. So Uber Elder is just Schaefer and Elder at the same time. As in, like, the faux versions of both of them? So you're doing, like, the Shaper map, and you're also fighting Elder at the same time type thing? Or yeah, how does that work? sort of, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so if Sounds you fight Shaper, you're just fighting Shaper. If you're fighting Elder, you're fighting Elder while the Shaper is trying to help you. Um, and then on Uber Elder, you're fighting both at the same time because the uh, so the story is uh, or the lore is that the Elder is like corrupting the Shaper's mind, and then he's finally corrupted him, and now now the Shaper's bad. Uh, and Sana is the daughter of the Shaper and uh, is helping us fight them and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, then uh, you have to fight both at the same time. And there's just, there was so much to dodge. And, and just, I thought it just felt like a really fun fight to do. Like the, uh, how it's telegraphed and stuff. It was just really fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Shaper, Shaper and Searing Exarch are the two that I've seen that I like the most so far. Because they felt fair. And they also felt, like, challenging. Like, I, I felt like the only time I didn't be able to beat them, including right now, I still haven't beat Shaper. Is that I'm just not good enough to do it. Yeah. That, you know, it's just I can't dodge the thing. I get hit in the face with Shaper's yellow balls. It is so hard. I drop instantly. It is hard. Yeah. No, for sure. Like it is hard. I mean, my my top three would be Uber Elder, Maven, and Searing Exarch, I think. I love anything that is like very like where you actually have to dodge and things. And I, I really wish Path of Exile had one boss fight, just one singular boss fight. Um, in in the same way of like, I don't know, are you familiar with the no hit run in Sanctum? Uh, from what I my, I'll tell you what I know about, it, and you can tell me if that means I'm familiar or not, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, because the whole you know don't want to lie to you about being familiar with it? Uh, is I know if you no hit, you get more rewards. Is my understanding? So there's a and special that's relic. All I know. There's a special relic that allows a no hit run to take place. And it just instead of having you know. Uh, 500 and whatever resolve you can gain it caps your resolve at one so no matter what you do you oh. can only get hit once um and if you complete that run and the relic's quite rare you get a really rare item called the original sin converts everything to chaos damage and mm. i really wish we had a kind of similar boss where not necessarily that it's one hit but that it's not really about your build like your damage is capped and your tank is capped so that you can't out gear it i just wish we had like one one boss that you cannot outgear at all. That would be so cool to me. All of them you can though is what you what every, I'm hearing here is all of them you can, can outgear. Yeah, you can always just far more. So like a softcore strategy for a lot of bosses is just you know you go super glass cannon twenty to fifty million damage, and then even if you're a new player, you don't have to deal with the mechanics. You don't have to stand in certain circles and dodge. You can just boss dead. Okay, I can understand that. I mean, that's sort of how D4 is, too, at the moment, at least. Like, Uber yeah. Lilith, I can literally kill with one punch. You just hit him with the hammer, and she dies, so... Yeah, I was kind of devastated about that in D4, because when the, when the season came out, I was uh, I had her, like, pretty deep into Stage 2 uh, on, on the build I was playing, and I was, like, I was feeling pretty good about it, because I was doing a different build. I wasn't doing the Twisting Blades Rogue. I was doing, like, a Bow Rogue. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. I think I'm going to get this. And and then, like, when, and this, oh, sorry, this was season zero. So, like, pre, yeah, pre. Nerfs, it was just really hard. And anything she did one hit, you had to play perfectly. And I was like, oh, I love this. And I thought it was so well designed. And, and it made me really appreciate Cheat Death because you could have a boss of that difficulty. And then I look at my inventory. And I'm like, okay, I have Cheat Death. Cool. Let's go in. And then I die. And I'm like, I didn't pop my Cheat Death. I just looked at it. <laughs> Um, yep. So I went in. I was probably the first person on Hardcore to go in without Cheat Death active. I just wasn't intending to. So that was embarrassing. And then I, I didn't bother killing it until this patch, Season 3, which we're, we're Season 2, right? We're, yeah, Season 2. Season 3 will be yeah, uh, January, late January. 
I thought Uber Lilith, if you do it as like ethical or whatever the meme is, like if you do it as intended, basically with all the mechanics, is a pretty yeah. cool boss fight. It is. Like it's actually decently designed, but you know the the things happening like you're describing with the Poe, which is you just everyone just kills her instantly. Like there's not really any yep. actual fight happening, but it is a cool fight. Is the way it was originally yeah. designed. Thankfully, for most people, we don't have that power creep in Poe yet. Like even even like the the one shots don't really happen as. Um, but yeah, no, I I was hoping for more bosses like Uber Lilith in Diablo Four by now. Um, I was expecting that we, okay, sure, like, season one was going to be kind of mild because it was developed alongside launch. And then I was expecting season two to have one or two more bosses like Uber Lilith, and then season three another two. So, I was hoping for a bit. Yeah, we got, we, we got, what, the five new bosses, as they call it, but the reality is, like, they're kind of all solved before anyone even did them i mean uber yeah. durio i i killed on hardcore on Druid with a bad build at like level 90. the thing that makes whatever. me so sad about it is that's entirely a balance problem and again right again i am not the target audience here so it doesn't need to be different sure. realistically as long as people are having fun that's whatever but i did the fight super under leveled and it was a blast like if you have a bad build and you're under leveled like we did uber durio it's or 70 on hardcore we almost died. It was so hard. It was really intense. And I got that nice feeling of like, you know, almost dying. And it was so fun. So I think playing Diablo 4 for people like me like that is actually a pretty good solution. Like setting maybe like new rules for yourself. Like you're not allowed to be super broken or you need to be 20 levels under leveled. Makes it really fun. Yeah, I think it was Woody was doing uh, like an all blue item rogue that oh, was man. clearing the bosses, etc. So, I mean, there's people kind of trying to to keep the excitement alive with that way yeah. as well. I mean, that, for me, it's, it's, I've done everything except Abertor Zer. So if I want excitement, I'm just going to go play PoE, honestly. Like, I have all these bosses I haven't killed. I haven't even touched an Uber. I couldn't get to the Uber because I'd die from the minions on the way to the Uber as Zuri. I couldn't, couldn't even get into the room to see what she looked like. So uh, I got a long, I got a long crawl and uh, blind attempts here. I guess not so much blind anymore. I played the one league, but. I have yeah. a long bit of learning and trying a new build to go. I, you think you think the? Let me ask your opinion about my build here. Do you think the arcane cloak, crackling lance, archmage, like mana based build is is going to be another ZDPS build for me or what's? I build it out in POB and it's telling me up to four million, but I mean, you yeah, know, you I don't trust there? these. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Right, just you also you also said earlier no backseating, so I'm just trying. Not, I don't want to ruin your. I didn't here. say no backseat. I said no spoilers for the boss. I'm trying to okay, learn okay, the. Okay, okay. Right, um, Archmage is generally not in a good spot right now. It was. It actually can be with. Um, what was it? People were doing. I think Al Kaiser was just doing something. There's like a. Um, there's staff. Just look for staff. You know? The triple, what is it? The triple damage staff. Uh, it's okay. I've only read about five of them anyway. List of unique saves. I mean, I'll recognize it. Uh, is it staves? It, hands. It, pledge of hands, people were doing Archmage builds with. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they're pretty... That's the one we put in the build. So okay. I feel good about that then. That's good. You're on the right path for sure. Um, so Archmage is a very, like, very gear intensive build. It does need a lot of stuff. And it is okay. very good when it comes online. It takes a while to get there. And Archmage is not in a good spot right now. So it was super meta. Everybody was playing Archmage. Because mm -hmm. what makes it so strong is you're scaling not just your offense, but your defense with the same thing. Because you can use mana for my mind over matter. matter. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So they did nerf it pretty hard. And it's, yeah, it hasn't really come back. If you're playing Trade League, at least your gear will be cheap. Something yeah, like that. that's that. We are doing a uh, Trade League. It's, I think it's like Cloak of Defiance and as Turi's Fobo for the necklace and then Pledge of Hands for the staff. And it that was about like it. And then right some path. yellows. It sounds like you're on the right path. You will probably have some mana issues. Uh, that's i mean it's lit up like a christmas tree on path of building with all the warnings i have this thing is like yeah you got problems son you got problems like that's what it's telling I don't me know if so. you have it already but there is a watcher's eye that every time you cast you have a chance to like recover your mana that does help 
actually sounds like a that's a hot tip right there. Am they're I pretty cheap? It's a clarity watch design. So I'm looking at my path of building right now. Since so few people play Archmage, what I did when I played it is you go for a double clarity watcher's eye, and there's one that's mana recovery rate and one that is um the the chance to recover. Now, last time I played Archmage, I was also doing it when it was off meta, so it was pretty cheap. But yeah. It, it just okay. Depends. Well, that sounds good. At least things will be cheap. And I, we're doing the Arcane Cloak for defenses. But I'm like looking at my build right now, and it says total man of 5897. All right. But the cost is, my lord, the cost is 1471 for the first one. But it says 4.9 million DPS, baby. So, I mean, that's compared to my 200k Z DPS shield be, crush. But how long can you cast before you run out of mana? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know how that works. I mean, what? What's Twice? The, I don't. What's the cost of your uh, Cracklands or whatever? Oh, it says mana cost 1471 on the Crackling Lands and what's your main cast skill. Rate? Hold on. Bear with me. Dun, uh, nah, at, the top. Nah. at the top. Okay. Cast rate 3.46. So oh, how bad is that? What does that mean? That means that you do three of those casts per second. So in oh, that's one... not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so, yeah, oh, you're no. going to struggle for mana. What's your mana recovery rate? Okay, mana region 1329. Oh, that's it, not too bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing mid row yellows. So I'm using crackling lance with with lightning penetration, faster casting, intensify, consecrated effect, uh, and archmage, obviously, and then conductivity, clarity, vitality, wrath, and arcane cloak. What's your defenses in this field? But you, what's a defense? No, <laughs> I mean, there's right. not much a defense. Total life is 2,700 right here. Uh, the defense is, I have mana. Excellent. Excellent. So, All not right. good. I can't the defenses wait are not to good. see this. I, I mean, I don't think it's a terrible idea, and I think you'll have a lot of fun. And really, like, taking something, making it your own, and going on a journey, like, nothing is better than that. And people will love to see you, like, finally take down bosses with it. If you can do it, I, mean, be, you I would love to see me finally take down bosses. Is I would love to take down a boss to take one home, and that's not you know one where everyone's like, ah, that's the tutorial version. Congratulations! Like it would be good to get one feather in my cap at least once. It would be absolutely fantastic. Though I do have, I have conquered one boss, which is the shop in the game. I've got the MTX looking like Palpatine, so uh, GGG is being financially supported by your boy. Absolutely, nice. That's good. Yeah, no, it's it's really really interesting because they've done so well for real realistically having no pay to win in their game. Obviously, like I'm pretty against like things like stash tabs and stuff costing uh money because I think games can do really well with just cosmetic monetization, but they they do deserve the money they get. They do very good stuff. I'm surprised the game's free to be honest with you. Like it it's really if I look at all the other a. Yeah, yeah, I mean, true. If you want to, like, sell stuff and, like, actually be able to play the game, sure, you're going to spend a few bucks. But it's, it's it, at least I can try it and know that I want to spend money. Like, I mean, some of these other games I've been looking at on, on Steam, people want me to play Last Epoch or Grim Dawn or all these other ones. And it's like, Last Epoch costs money. It's not free. You know, yeah. you, have to, Epoch, you have to purchase it. So, so, like, Path of Exile ends up being anywhere between 30 to $60 for most people. Last Epoch is... Thirty-five dollars, and it, it's, it's a fair price. I'm not complaining about it? the price at all. Yeah, I've actually played it. Me and Rax played through together. We uh, I did the campaign and all that. I'm so um, excited for the launch. It's actually kind of good though. Like it's, it's like surprisingly good, good for being like in early access. Like I don't it's... begrudge any. I actually bought their supporter packs. I thought it was a pretty good game. Yeah. Well, some people seem to be back and forth on the the graphics. It's either you really like it or oh, you they're, really they're don't. Improving it improving it a lot they have, yeah but i'm i'm liking it so yeah, far yeah i i played it the first time back in 2018 and it was trash like really ugly like mm. purple polygons everywhere it looked like tomb raider not really but you know you had the idea it was like really really bad and like to see how far they've come like it's it's amazing so i'm i'm very excited for the launch so i'm really cool i actually they stopped they actually funnily enough stopped selling it because of this but I bought their uh, $1,000 supporter pack where you could design a unique item. And then I got to design the unique item with them on stream. So I made a um, 
Squirrel yeah. helmet? Let me yeah. guess. A squirrel helmet yeah. that turns your people into squirrels? Have you seen it? You know how I know this? Uh -huh. It's because uh, I was I was making a Beastmaster, and uh, Rax kept telling me, you gotta, you, you've got to name him Squirrel Boy. <laughs> Yeah. Because you're going to have lots of squirrels in there. And I had no idea what he was talking about until he went down the rabbit trail explaining to me that he spent $1,000 to put squirrels in the last depot. It was worth it. I, they sent me a version in real life, so I actually have the helmet IRL. Can I see it? You can't just tell me that without... Squirrel helmet. Okay. Do, 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 Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Right. I won't be able to hear you now. I'm going to put it on and I have a headset. Yeah. But it's, um... It has magnets on the horns to keep them on. And it's like they shaped it after my head. You look like Dovahkiin. It's, it's pretty cool. And then you can see that it's like a squirrel. So it has an eye there. And there's like the head. And then Viking style because I'm from Norway. Okay. I got Viking blood in me. Need a... Need a dragon shout or something though. I'm not gonna so lie, cool. I'm mildly disappointed that there's no foes ruda or anything. You know, we need a major dragon shout out of you. <laughs> there in the but yes. that was pretty cool. That's a good helmet, man. I'm surprised you got that too, on top of the item in the game. Yeah, I mean, I guess I mean they got extra promotion out of it, so they they probably loved yeah, it too, you know. That's great. Yeah. But yeah, no, um, after I did that, after I bought that supporter pack, they had so many people buy it, and they were like, this is not worth the dev time. Like, we can't, because it takes so much time. And, uh, yeah, they, they stopped doing it. Yeah, I was going to say, doesn't PoE do something similar where you can, like, add, add an item in the game, right? So, they've had a few things like this. So, first, they had, they had some crazy supporter packs back in the day. They had, like, they had a Kickstarter, and I think the most expensive supporter pack was um something of Rayclast, creator of Rayclast or lord of Rayclast. i can't remember but it was thirty thousand dollars only one person bought it and it was design a monster type that goes into the game uh it was bought by a guy called sharon 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 um and uh, yeah sharon and uh yeah he put in the drop bears the ones you meet in like act two that like drop down from the sky the koala things he put those in and then you had loads of other supporter packs that you had designed a unique map. So a lot of the unique maps in Path of Exile are designed by players. Pretty much all the bad ones. Like it's, yeah, it's don't I know it. Yeah. You want to hear a story about that? Uh-huh. So the foils, you know how you can have the Voidborn key or whatever, right? And you can get a foil. So I was playing solo cell phone for the first time. I was like, I'm going to try minions. I like Necromancer and D4. Let me try minions, right? So I'm playing the minion one. I get the key. I have no idea what it is. Chat's like, oh my God, you got the key. All right. So I go to open the chest. And what do I get out of it? But a foil Grandmasters Hall or Hall of Grandmasters or something. Yeah. And it's a map that I can't even, I, I couldn't get one minion through. I, get ga I got gathered down immediately. Yep. Yep. Hall of Grandmasters is evil. It's great. Only player created characters in there. Yeah, apparently I got troll. Like that's the from what I understand, that's literally the worst yeah, possible so drop, pretty right? Much, it's pretty much everything that players have access to, like control something. We always do whatever the most punishing is for other players, it seems like. So um every divination card that's in the game is actually designed by a player. Like Crying Gear themselves have not designed a single divination card. Um, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um obviously like they can buy one as a person. 
uh, or uh, Becks got gifted one by the community, etc. But like as a company, they don't like, oh, these would be good in the game. We're going to design them. Um, and they used to sell unique item creation as well. Um, and there is a new one coming now. Like obviously right now we have the Voidborn Reliquary Key. There is a new one coming. We don't know what it is. A lot of people are thinking it's just going to be another key. I'm hoping that it'll be something like a PoE2 design thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Like they, I don't know when we get to see that. But yeah, they're, I'm actually hoping that they will do even like a, a, a pretty crazy design thing, like design a PoE2 unique for a thousand or two thousand dollars or something. I don't know. But we'll I'm see. assuming that you're going to do it. Like no matter what, you're, you're, probably, you're, yeah, you're, probably. you're ramping. I'm in deep. I'm in deep, but yeah, no, like even the they they usually do decent stuff for the five hundred dollars supporter pack, but it is still like a crazy amount of money to play uh, spend on a video game. I kind of want to see the next supporter pack because I have a feeling that I'm going to spend a crazy amount of money on this video game. I already did the four hundred and eighty dollar pack, and no regrets. I actually quite like the hideout. It's pretty cool to be I honest like the with floating. you mechanic but i'm a little bit disappointed that i have to float with that chest i wish the floating oh thank you would just thank be you as a chest slot thing like that's fine but i, I don't want it to be tied to that mtx i hate it a hundred percent i actually i'll be on i actually don't like the chest yeah, i don't like I've, the whole the whole space thing i yeah. i want to just not have my feet touch the plebeian ground ground and be able to to fly, I thought Palpatine should float, but then I was like, Palpatine doesn't look like a celestial yeah, god I, or I whatever. I've them about this a lot. I don't think it's ever going to change. They seem pretty stubborn on it, but yeah. That would be nice. I, I was trying to figure out a way. It's like, is there a way I can skin vanish it, like vanishing die over the tide? Apparently not. None of that very works. Very annoying. Because so. there's so many. They're, they're st it's very frustrating for me because they're starting to have so many cool... I don't know what to call them, but like utility MTX, like things that are like not even about the appearance, but they have cool things tied to them, but they're always tied to that one specific thing. So I wish they would split that and have effect MTX and armor MTX. They should be completely separate. They also, there's one major issue that needs to be solved immediately that's ruining the entire game, which is the Templar's neck is completely fucked. And I, I found this out when I obviously Palpatine's a dude and the only lightning person that makes sense is apparently the Templar from what I can figure out, right? right. So I bought the smoking hood. I was doing it in my Marauder, my shield crush and the smoking hood looked badass. So I'm like, I'm equipping it all. Then I'm like, let me make a Templar and see what it looks like. And it, it, it's horrible. It looks terrible. It, it, it's got this huge like V where it doesn't even connect to everything else. It looks like a giraffe and it's like straight up and I, it looks completely different. And so I, I went through about $30 of hoods and, and then I bought bandanas trying to fix it. But the bandana makes it worse because the bandana goes up to his forehead for some reason on the Templars. Whole head's a bandana. So it's not um yeah, they need to fix the neck. Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever get Pee Wee one character models. I hope so. Oh, I hope so. That'd be nice. But with Pee-wee 2 on the horizon, I kind of doubt it. Mm -hmm. I do feel like... I do think Pee-wee 1 will be not necessarily neglected, but I, I don't think they're going to the rework features like that. I noticed that it... Am I wrong, or is it the graphics for this next expansion look better than the one we already had at least from the trailer it actually looked like oh. they did something to the graphics so there's a line in every patch notes that is very underplayed in my opinion and it is continue to increase graphics voice audio etc of the game honestly like it's very very underplayed they do such a good job with that and there's so many things that they will either take out of the game or just improve that people don't necessarily notice. I remember there was like a really, really bad blonde line mod that they removed from the game because people hated it. They didn't even say anything about it. They just removed it. And I was like, did anyone else notice they removed that? And people were like, oh, it's gone. I haven't seen it in days. And I'm like, yeah, they like, they don't hype this shit up. They just do things sometimes. Uh, and it's a bit like that with like just quality of life things and, and graphics and audio that they just continue to improve. They, they do a lot of it just very, just yeah, it's done. Like, enjoy. Because the game looks so different 
since 2013 or whatever to, to today. It's insane. Yeah, it was the first thing I noticed. I was thinking, I was like, this looks... I thought it was maybe a render. You know, it's like, okay, it's the cinematic render or whatever, but I thought it looked, like, pretty pretty better than, they, they you know, but I've only played one league, though. They do improve it a lot. Even in the MTX, you can see. It's actually something I've, I've been saying they should do is, uh, so, like, you know how strong drops are at a launch of a game, right? I think yeah. they should do drops more with really trash MTX, like the really old shit that no one's buying anymore anyway. Nobody wants Golden Seraph, but people love free shit. You know, people are yeah, going to tune in for free shit. So do like a one week campaign of drops. They all hear some here. Oh God, that is ugly, but it's free. Enjoy. You know, like, or some of the ones you can't get any more. Maybe people kept know, recommending like, never do that. Really? That's like a, like a hard line for them. They're like, if it's gone, it's gone type thing. Yeah, they're big on FOMO and things like that. Okay. I still have very bad FOMO. It was the, the first time I was going to buy a supporter pack. And the most expensive one, it was either 500 or $1,000. And I'm like, I literally have no way of swinging this. I even like struggled swinging the $80 supporter pack at the time. We still have the portal. It's the warrior portal. But I remember seeing the exalted effect. And it was so bright, so cool. And I'm still sad today that I don't have that. So. It's kind of a bummer it, then. I, I'm 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 double edged swords with that type of stuff because it makes me, you know, I I can remember games where there's limited time cosmetics that you can acquire, that uh, that make it where the people that played that long really have oh, something absolutely. to show for it, you know. And so it's kind of like I get it, you know, but it does it is kind of a bummer because people kept being like, try these boots or try these gloves, and they're like, oh, I guess you can't get them anymore. Yeah, like, I, yeah, yeah. A Palpatine builds incomplete. <laughs> they do have uh, a lot of things like that but at least it's only cosmetics so they do gotta eat but yeah it would be better if there was no FOMO but it is, uh, it is, it is insane how effective it is speaking of not being added back did, was it your video title I saw a YouTube video saying that the, some of the league mechanics from this league were not going to be repeated I think the, the total league the one that I started on here yeah, Ancestor so... League or whatever None of that is going core immediately. And mm. I'm of the opinion that no league should ever go core immediately. I think they should, every single league after, they should always take a step back and be like, this will not be going core. We're going to see how we want to reuse this in the main game. I think that should always be the case with no exceptions. Um, because we had so many problems as a community with Harvest. It came back in full power and it just ruined the poe community we're still seeing the after effects of it um is it because is because the was it standard league like the eternal realm essentially no. is, can it ruin the no, can it ruin the economy or something no, or no, what's no, the no, logic I, no that economy is long gone that's not the problem um, <laughs> that's what i was wondering to be honest. So basically what happened with harvest was that harvest was very very popular and we knew it was overpowered it was super strong and people really enjoyed it and it um it was going away, and everybody was like, "Expect." I think it. I think that actually went away for one league. I can't even remember now because it's a while ago. But either way, Harvest was brought back more powerful than it was in its fully original state when it was the core part of the game. So they brought it back, but even more powerful. And we're like, "Okay, I guess this is just it now." And then they completely nerfed it, and then everyone was like, "What the fuck? You just brought it back super powered, and now it's nerfed." And then it created this whole, like, us versus GGG thing. People were really like, oh, they're taking things away from us. And it, it created a lot of hostility. There's, like, even a, like, sort of documentary about it and how the entire PUE community changed after that. And it is very true. Everything has been different after that. Um, really? Yeah. From that one change? From that one change. Uh, I'd say that's the main thing that happened that changed it. But, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, tattoos, everything like that, everything to do with Toda, none of it is going core. Some of the unique items went into the core draw pool, and they were pretty cool. Um, I do think tattoos would be an easy thing to do core in the future, and just have a limit of how many tattoos you can have. Like, even if you can only have five tattoos, they are very, very game-changing. Uh, being able to add an extra 10% suppression on your build instead of stats, very, very interesting. Um, and I, I thought it was such a cool thing. So I would love to see it go core. I'd rather lose some power in other places because for me, things that change the way you approach the game are the most exciting. 
So items that maybe like make you look at resistances differently, like Fire of the Storm, where you really want to stack a lot of lightning resistance to get more crit, etc. I always thought that was cool. And the same with um, the way we had to focus on attributes and items that now had, you know, um, less less dexterity needed and stuff on gear would would finally be useful, whereas before we would normally never care. So I, I like that a lot. I would love to see it go core, but yeah, none of that is going core now, at least. Okay, well, that's kind of good to know. I didn't really get too involved with the league mechanic. I played it a little while, but then I didn't get far enough to, like, see Divines pop up or whatever. I heard you had to be grinding it for quite a bit. To... Plus, Shield Crush, to be honest, might not have been the best build for, for that mechanic. I almost went Shield Crush last league, but then I realized I'd be playing Shield <laughs> Crush. And I, I yeah, don't okay. Wanna, I don't want to play Shield Crush. You, you sure you want to join the 150,000 you know, armor, 200k DPS team? Because we could use a good player. I was going to do it because I had a Mage Blood, and with Mage Blood in that build, you do get two or three million armor. So you actually do get quite a lot of damage. But I just don't like the delivery system of the build. It's just a bit clunky. Fair. Yeah. Fair. I, I'm wondering uh, how much more. I'm... Yeah, you know, and, and it's it's not exactly the best animation. You're just kind of yeah, exactly. shimmy, shimmy back and forth. Yeah. So you don't, you don't I, really I look that cool. I spent a day watching people play it, and I was like, I really will not make my Mage Blood build this. No, and I made the even play even worse because I have the one where it repeats. So, like, I hit the button and then I stand there for three hours while my guy slowly shields it. And, yeah, well, it's it was also, next I week. Really, I really wanted a nice build, too, because it was actually my first time using Mage Blood. Um, it was actually the third Mage Blood I've had, but I just let the others rot in my stash to tilt people. Um, I still don't know what that ability. I've heard Mage Blood everywhere. I have no idea to this day what it does. So Mage Blood, the reason it's so strong is it lets you have four flasks online permanently. Um, so they don't use flask charges or anything like that. And and that might be a little mm. bit like, well, why is that so strong? So obviously you can stack loads of things like flask effect and stuff like that. But what makes it really strong is uh, you have the implicit that is 25% increased effect, but it lasts for a lower duration. So obviously with Mage Blood, that's just 25% increased effect. Mm. And then you on top of that have the Enkindling Orbs, and it's like 50 or 75% increased effect. So you're basically oh, wow. doubling how effective the Flasks are. So a Topaz Flask, instead of being 20% removed uh, or reduced lightning damage, it's like 40 or 45 maybe. Um, and a Quicksilver Flask, instead of giving like 30 movement speed, will give... 150 movement speed so it just ends up being so much power from your flask and then yeah the, the like 60 percent increased armor ends up being 140 Plus, that like, does sound uh, pretty fun yeah so it's like it's very very strong and this way it's really strong for armor stacker because you're you're doing the uh is it called iron reflexes yeah um where it converts your evasion to armor then you have 140 percent evasion 140 percent armor and you're getting the maybe plat 4,000 armor, 4,000 evasion from both the flasks, and it just stacks really, really hard. It's fun. Stacks okay, like maybe, maybe my Shield Crush character eventually has a way out then. He has a, he has a prayer and a dream. Need a mage Blood. Mage Blood fixes every build, but it is also a few hundred divines. Even on the Standard League? Or I, I guess the Standard League economy be is very expensive, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, people would probably even give you one to play around with on Standard, because Standard... Um, it is fun to play around with, but it can also break the game a bit. It, it does makes break sense. The game. Yeah. I don't know. I would, I would always recommend just stay, staying on the temporary leagues. That's like generally the most fun, but yeah, I mean, everyone's different. So is it true that you don't like Blight? Because what, every, what I hear is I was doing Blight and people would come in and meme on me and be like, oh, Zizran must hate this stream because I'd be doing, you know, Blight all day, every day. No, I actually like Blight maps. Um, it is okay. one of the mechanics. I put in every wish list for things I hope they remove from the game and put oil somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm doing else. conflicting energy here. Z I, you know, I like it. I hope they remove it from the game. All right, well. Um, so part of why I hated it has actually been fixed this patch. Um, I really hated how buggy it was, uh, especially mm. with like the rowers that become invincible and you have to like go off screen and wait for them to like walk in. Um, I thought it was a bit of a disgrace that they let such a buggy mechanic go core. I think like if you're gonna make something go core, it should at the very minimum be bug free. I don't think that's too much to ask. 
If it's not bug free, then don't make it go core. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but the towers only shoot while you're in screen range of them. People kept telling me that, which yeah. was a problem for me because, you know, I would run all the way out and build a tower, like on the portal or whatever. And then it's like, why are these guys full HP? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah and I hate that. I think it's so annoying. Mm -hmm. It just feels really buggy. It feels like I'm playing an alpha. I'm like, and and it's like the way some of the maps will be, it'll actually be almost impossible to be in range of all the sides where they're firing. Well, yeah, well, you know, I'm worried about my left side, yeah. so I'm running so, to the left so side and then all over the, the right reason, side. So... That's part of the reason why I hate Blight and the Undying Monster. So at least some of that got fixed now, but the, there's still going to be a lot of the Blight bugs in. So I think that's really frustrating. Um, and I have never been a huge fan. Well, I'm, I'm a bit of a blaster. Like I love just like sprint running through maps and, and everybody sure. doesn't need to enjoy the same thing. So that's fine. Uh, and I, I like, do like that people love Blight. But I yeah, the reason I hate it is because when you get to Blight, it really just pulls you out of that mapping zone, right? You're like blasting, you're blasting, you're blasting. It's like... Do, 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 do. Oh, hi, Exile. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. Uh, you, uh, so you now, hate it for the reasons I love it. I am standing here for fucking two minutes or some shit. Yeah. Waiting. Yeah. It's like, new it's great. roots. New roots. Oh, yeah, it's I'm branching. Like, oh, Dude, the, I love that. God. Oh, I, Christ. Just over already. And yeah, I hate it. That's why I hate I'm it. Okay. Well, like, you know, that's why I also don't like ritual. I also don't like expedition um, mm -hmm. for, for all the same reasons. But it's not necessarily bad that it's in the game. And yeah, I think it's good when there's something for everyone. And um, SSF, you have to interact with everything. You're like choosing that when you go SSF. And if you're a trade league, the beauty of it is if you don't like a mechanic, that'll make other people find it more profitable to farm because you'll have to buy it off them. So it is good Thank in that you. way. It is good in that I'm way. And you're you're helping a, a noob videos, like me out. And I recommend it to people. It is still very good. I just don't it's, like it personally. I, it, no, I get it. It's it, it's uh it's funny because the reasons you mentioned there why I love it. Like when the ladies yelling, like it's branching exile, like every time I'm like, oh I love it. Like, yes, yell in my ear, Cassia. I fucking love it. No, it's great. And uh I like the minigame aspect of it too, but I like tower defense, you know. You know what I hate was harvest. Like I won't do it. I refuse. I don't know why it annoys me. And the weird Batman thing where you like have to mug these dudes that are in their headquarters or whatever and then figure out who done oh, it or something. Syndicate. I don't do that thing anymore. Yeah, I don't do that either. Heist is fun. Heist is a lot of fun. I like oh bank God, robbing. You are the opposite of me. I love it. I hate heist. Heist, heist Metamorph, great. and Blight were like my top three things that I wanted to remove. Metamorph suck. And ritual. Oh, I love ritual. <laughs> Now this is great. This is great. I like. I see. I love horde style though, where it says I just have to. The the heist is like I'm bank robbing. I love it. I actually. Like That's what people were telling too. me. It, it's it's gamba, right? We get to like flip a coin or this something. Is ritual. And... Yeah. Yeah. Ultimatum's the only reason I hate ritual as well, because ultimatum's just better ritual. Um, I think blight as well. I um, I give you some PoE uh, racing lore. I have like a little mm. PTSD from like it's probably okay. the race where I went the hardest um pushing for first level 100 and there was me and this guy called oscar were pretty much the only ones in the top ladder that hadn't died and we were like intertwined in xp like we were like passing each other so people in my town would be like oscar passed you and they were like no it updated again this passed him and i'm like oh my god stop just shut the fuck up i'm so stressed hearing about us passing each That's other great. every three seconds um and I and like we were within 10 million XP of each other for three days, which is very little. It's like so insane. Um, and it was a very competitive race. And then I would, I ended my stream. I'm like, guys, I'm so tired. I'm going to go to bed. But I was lying. I didn't actually go to bed. So I like ended my stream and pretended, but I just went and had a quick bite to eat, then came back, started grinding. He had gone to bed and I was like, oh, I had work. He came back and we had both tried to fake out each other. So both of us pretended to go to sleep and stop grinding to hope the other would go to sleep. Um, That's 9 billion IQ, though. Yeah, so we did, I think, both of, that, both of those sessions for us were like 38 hours or 36 hours or something. Um, and we would both be like doing things like two hours sleep. So it's not necessarily super healthy, but it was so fun. And it was such a crazy race. And I was playing a Spectre build and I finally got the... Um, the Spectre Soul Eater Jewel, whatever it's called. I can't remember right now because my brain's shot. 
Um, and I start pulling ahead in XP. And and this was all in Blight League. And then I went from being 10 million apart to 20 to 30. And he deletes his character. He's like, well, I'm not coming second. If I'm not winning, I'm not losing either. I'm not first. I'm not playing. But he deletes his character. But pretty much the same second that he tells people he deleted his character. And people are blowing up in my time. Like, he deleted. He conceded the race. I die. I rip. I get uh, so the fire golem in Romeo Blight and Juliet when affected by multiprog summons like 30 golems and they all have like three fireballs each. So it overlapped and I didn't know this. I was just poor. So I die and it's like this happens within 10 seconds of each other. And I'm like, what a fucking disaster. And I convinced him like, dude, I died. You should restore your character because if you've deleted a character, you can email GG and be like, hey, I deleted by accident. Can I please have my character back? And they do it. So, was, And he was like, oh, it doesn't feel right. And I'm like, dude, if I'm not going to win, you should win. So he restores his character. He fucking dies. Oh, no. <laughs> and then Steel emerges. So the guy in third is just like, Steel yeah. Emerged. He wasn't even racing. He was just playing the game and enjoying watching the race. He's like, well, I guess I'm first now. I guess I'll Bradbury into victory. <laughs> and he's Australian, so it's perfect. He won like two or three days after we would have won. And I was like, ah, oh, I, I died at level 99.6. I was just so 99.6? Something like that, yeah. It was very high. Was oh, my God. Down. Well, you know, slow is smooth and smooth is fast or whatever, as they say, right? Yeah, it was. So I have a little bit of PTSD from Blight there as well. All very right, fun, well. Though. Very fun. The victory was branching, I guess, to somebody else there, and that's no real. <laughs> Blight was the real winner in the end. Yeah, it'll yeah. be it'll be interesting to see what the uh, the league mechanic is this Friday. I'm excited. Is it is that is the league mechanic the whole like you go to the the wood thing and like you get in this in... with um, yeah a sanctum like mechanic on top that'll probably kill us because uh, sorry not sanctum uh, sentinel. Did, did you play Sentinel? You weren't here yet, right? No, I'm not familiar with Sentinel, no. The Sentinel would shoot out Empowered um, and like Empower Monsters, and that's very similar to the glowy effect that we saw in the trailer. But what's scary is that Sentinel also came with, if something had 50 Empowerment, that was the same as 50 or 80 more damage on the monster. So it's very like subtle, because they look pretty much the same, they're just slightly glowy, but they got shit tons more damage. So when that happened to an enemy that was already scary, it could just very, very reasonably one-shot you. And that's just going to be everywhere now, or, or loads of it now. So that's terrifying. And you pretty much always play hardcore at every yeah, league. You're, like, you're not playing I've, softcore. I've never so. played softcore. Never? Like from the beginning, even when you're... Okay. Yep. The only time huh. I play softcore is for the events uh, BPL. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. So nope, BPL, can't say I have. you should join one. As a new player, you'll have such a blast. They announce it pretty yeah, early. Uh, it is a weekend thing or like a three-day thing. And it's usually like a couple of teams, like three to five teams, depending on how many people sign up. 400 people per team. And they have like a sign-up where you say like how many hours you're going to go, how experienced you are. And everything gets divided up pretty evenly. So they'll have like good players on every team and not experienced people on every team, etc. And then you choose what do you want to do? Do you want to do Blight? You can be part of the Blight group. You want to do Bestiary? Cool. You can be part of the Bestiary group. And there'll be goals like farm every Blight unique, farm every Bestiary unique, farm every boss unique, farm deep into Delve. And there'll be. Okay, so it's like a bingo board or something almost. Yeah. Like, you know. It's a treasure okay. hunt. It's a scavenger hunt. And there'll be daily missions like, okay, everybody needs to farm a hundred offering to the goddess as a team right now. And then you have 400 people and they're all like, boom, okay, we got it first. We get more points. And it's super fun. So cool. that's the that's the only time I play softcore for that event. And yeah, that sounds fun. I do uh, this versus stream, and I do that in softcore. So I have to play blindfolded and stuff. So I have uh, my announcer, Brittle Knee, will like he'll be watching my screen and on screen share on Discord, and she'll be like left, right, okay, Saro's attacking you, heal, or oh, you're dead. And I actually, and then you have lab. to beat the chat. Yeah, to like beating the campaign or how? Yeah, it? it's like basically it's a. It's kind of similar to subathons. It's like a shameless like raise money thing. Um, sure. It's it's a lot of fun, good way to raise money for myself. And uh, yeah, just I do it once every like three months, every six months, something like that. Hmm. Sounds kind of fun. I mean, you're kind of talking me a little bit into playing hardcore. I thought I was gonna play softcore trade league, like basic version, and try to you know weasel my way into maybe actually killing something. But 
Hardcore does sound pretty fun. Last time I played Hardcore, I was playing Hardcore Ruthless, and I got to Act 9 and then died, and I was like, ugh. Like, now I gotta do my 38 million hours, because it takes me forever to progress. I, it, the Ruthless is kind of hard. Do you do Ruthless at all? Are you much of a Ruthless player? I will play Ruthless at some point now, because they added a movement ability, so I'm not as against Ruthless anymore. I hated the idea of the fact that it had no movement ability at all. I thought that was trash. Uh, I was very surprised that they just instantly didn't have like a 10, 20, 30 second cooldown movement ability. Um, so that, uh, I was very against that when it first came out. Um, I was actually very excited for it before then. Like when I first heard the concept, I was like, this sounds great. It just, um, but yeah, I, I will probably play it at some point, but I, I just, I really like the base game. The base game is great. Yeah. I didn't really like Ruthless that much. It was kind of cool because it's like, okay, I get it. It's like a harder version. It, yeah. you know, limits you. Too scarce. Too scarce. I, I was getting dopamine withdrawals. You know, I went from like, yeah. you're, I'm doing Blight at the end of Blight. Just, shit's popping all over the screen. And I'm hyped. And then, you know, to if I get a yellow, I'm like, oh my God. You yeah. know, I actually, an item actually dropped in 2023. So it's kind of... It, you know, it, I'm a dopamine neither. I need it in the in the game. So uh, that's why when I put on the filters, it, it makes me feel worse because it's like my screen's just not full of garbage anymore. I like all the garbage all over the screen that tells me I'm getting items. 100%. No, I get it. And I mean, you have so many options, though. Whether you start on hardcore or if you play on software first and try to do your goals, you'll learn a lot on software, too. Like, I would say if you get very demotivated by dying, don't play hardcore. Yeah. 100%. Fair enough. And, I uh, enjoy the deaths to play hardcore. Well, my, my, to be honest with you, the part I'm really worried about is, is I haven't done the bosses and I'm purposely like blind to the bosses where I haven't looked up, you know, what serious looks like or whatever. Yeah, so you'll it's, get, you'll get shredded. Most of us that do play hardcore, yeah. there was a few bosses I've gone in blind on. Did I go in blind on Maven? Um, there's a few bosses I've gone in blind on, but generally I will practice first on standard. Sometimes we've had a pact. Went in blind on um, boss before Syrian X are called uh, Black Star. I went in blind on Black Star. What a disaster! I got absolutely yeah. deleted. So that was a bad one to go in blind on. But yeah, we did. We have done some pacts as a community, like with the racers, to go in blind on bosses until somebody gets the first kill done. That's been fun. But yeah, generally, most I will practice. I do want to? They are intended. Yeah, I think that's kind there. of the plan then. Yeah. Is, is this league is the one where it's like, I'm going to try to actually get a boss or two down, you know, do something other than just searing X arc and then get stuck at Shaper. So uh, hopefully I can kill something with this lightning guy. And then if all is well, that ends well, then I can try messing around with the hardcore a little bit. Yeah. Because kind of solo cell phone later, seems fun too. But... Later on hardcore. Yeah, true. Fair enough. There you go. Awesome. Oh, I'm excited. I'm glad it starts super early this time. It's 8 p.m. for me. Usually it starts at 9 or 10. So. Ooh, when does it start? Actually, that's a good point here. POE. Oh, yeah. I can just go to the website, can't I? Yeah, it's nice. Two hours, 15. Sorry, two days, 15 hours. 15 hours. So that is early, actually, for me. That's like 10, 10 a.m. or something for wow, me. Okay. That sounds perfect. No, it's great. I'll be able to get up, take a shower, have breakfast even. And then go kind of snowball right into it. But two days, 15 hours, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm excited. It's my first build up hype for it because, you know, I didn't, I joined kind of in the league had already been going yeah. for a bit when I joined last time. So it's my first time, like day one, let's go, you know. It'll be a spicy day one. Spicy day one. Well, uh, you know, I know we're probably wrapping up here. So on the end of it, I wanted to say, uh, I want to say thanks for. You know, how friendly you've been and everything uh, since kind of peeking my head in Path of Exile. Because, to be honest, everyone really has been really friendly. But you've been probably the most welcoming out of uh, all of the Path of Exile people so far. So, um, you know, thanks for all that. And and surprisingly, the PoE community, I, I guess it shouldn't be surprising. But it's, you know, I, I, I'm not used to communities being, like, so friendly. Like, it was just today I got rated by, like, four different PoE people. Like, all within the span of an hour or something. And, um... The community seems like really, really good, which is kind of nice because it's like it's good to have a game that's good. But then if the community is kind of rough, it can be, yeah. you know, rough sometimes, too. But it's it's kind of a I mean, it's a good. It's it's always exciting when more people want to play the same game as you. Right. And 
I mean, I, I do meme on D4 now and again, but I don't like the actual like, animosity between the communities. Like, yeah. D4 really does have a place in the ARPG community. Yes, there's a lot of things you could do better, but like, both the communities shitting on each other, it, it gets boring. So I think it's much better if everyone just, you know, is more friendly. Yeah, and it, it's, I'm um, less than a year into ARPGs and Jimro, so I'm kind of new into just the community. Everything, yeah. So I, I don't have, like, this, you know, us versus them, because I'm just like, ah, let me try this game, let me try this game type of thing. So it's... us versus them. Like, I want D4 to get better, I want PoE to get better. That's, I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, us versus them should be consumers versus everyone else. <laughs> Amen. Yep. But yeah, no, it's it's been great to watch you uh, enjoy and uh, discover more of PoE, dude. It's awesome. Well, when I get through the uh, when I get through trying to beat this stuff without having too many spoilers and all that, um, maybe I'll have you take a peek at my build when I get to my level ninety build no and, and uh, anytime, help me out a little bit. Anytime, maybe we'll do another one of these in like two or three weeks and check back and we can talk about how it went. That'd be fun, man. Yeah. I appreciate I appreciate the invite, appreciate the time, and um. Have a good league, you I too, suppose. Dude. Thank you so much. And to everybody watching on YouTube, we hope you have a great league as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out Darth on YouTube. We'll link his socials and stuff below. And uh, it's, it'll be streaming live on Twitch every day as well. So check us both out. Thanks for watching. Sub if you like the video. More importantly, try to die less than I do.